Hi everyone, today we have a really interesting rig tour for you guys that's a little bit different from what we normally cover on the channel. This is a luxury overlanding truck camper, basically. It is an Earth Cruiser Terra Nova that runs about $350,000, so priced like a, like a luxury condo on an overlanding platform. It's a really cool rig, and we're gonna meet up with Bill and Maureen, and Bill's gonna show us everything about this rig, uh, this is probably going to be a longer video, so we're going to go into a lot of detail. Uh, if you're interested in this kind of rig, I think you're going to find a lot of uh, great answers to the questions you might have. So let's turn it over to Bill. Earth Cruiser is out of Bend, Oregon, and they, uh, they have three models available uh, that you can see on their website. This is the only unit that's built uh, on a, do a domestic chassis. They will put uh, this particular house unit, as they call, on either a Dodge Ram, or we selected the Ford F-350, uh, and Earth Cruiser buys uh, an unfinished chassis, and they work from there. They build the house separate from, the, from that, and when they get the chassis modifications done, the house will be placed on it, and then you're good to go. So. Uh, let's go inside and we'll take a look at uh, how it's set up. So here we are inside. Uh, Earth Cruiser has the dinette uh, set up in the back along with all the uh, electronic controls and the battery and heater are under my feet. There is under seat storage uh, on both sides that run the full length here. Um, it does not go all the way to the floor. You'll see that uh, it's on top of the locker storage on outside. The uh, dinette is, a, is pretty conventional. Uh, it just goes down and makes a bed, which is pretty typical. So you have a nice bed arrangement back here for a third person. Uh, coming around, we have the uh, sink arrangement. Uh, there's a trash uh, drawer down here that pulls out for trash and uh, it has an induction two burner stove top, 130 liter uh, refrigerator there, uh, storage uh, over there in the drawers and storage, short storage compartments underneath uh, uh, there. The uh, bed arrangement, it's a queen width bed up there. Uh, and the length is about, I would say, 74 to 76 inches. It doesn't quite make a queen length, uh, but the width is. Uh, I have a drop-down piece turned up there. They designed it like that for a little extra counter space along there. So in, in, a, in a little bit here, we'll drop that down. Uh, uh, then coming around, there's uh, on the inlet to the door, there is a uh, shower arrangement underneath the uh, rug there is the shower sump. You lift up that little rug and, and there's a wooden uh, platform down there for your shower. Shower curtain hangs from the ceiling. Uh, you can see they have placed uh, uh, attachments up there. It just runs around there, makes a nice little enclosed square and the shower wand uh, is hooked up uh, hookup is underneath there we keep the shower curtain and the wand stored in this large compartment there uh, all these compartments that you see um, they're all from the marine industry as well as the materials of construction in here uh, so there's no issue with uh, water uh, getting in these compartments when you take a shower uh, in that shower area right there. Uh, uh, below the shower, there is the toilet. It's a compost toilet and the bifold doors swing open. And we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. Coming around, they have, an, uh, they have a microwave uh, for you and then the only other thing is here is this is a German uh, heater uh, controller and I'm not going to partake in pronouncing their name but uh, this heater unit is sits under my feet between the two batteries two large batteries down there we'll talk a little bit about them 
uh, and it draws gasoline out of the gas tank through through a dip tube that's in there. And then the uh, C-Zone controller here. This controls all the electronics, uh, all the lights, uh, and everything in the, uh, the camper. There aren't any hardwired switches. Uh, everything is controlled back uh, in the C-Zone, and we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. So back in the back here, on each side, uh, there's storage there, and these compartments open, and actually they go all the way down to the base uh, of the lock, pass-through locker back there. So you do have the opportunity to, uh, to store uh, small, tall items in there. Uh, we can see we use it for snacks and storage. And uh, Underneath the seat is the um, storage, uh, additional storage. Um, Earth Cruiser provides two bins here, and it goes much deeper than the two bins. Um, you can actually see the bins slide back there. It doesn't go full depth uh, because this area sits on top of the lockers outside. So there's under, and this storage arrangement is consistent on both both sides. Uh, moving around this way, we're, we've got the, uh, of course, the sink and drinking water. What Earth Cruiser has done is they have put in a three water line system. Uh, typical hot and cold water will run here right out of the tank. Then they have a separate Ecology Technologies uh, Seagull filtering system that runs a third cold water line for drinking. The, the one faucet's located here and one faucet's located outside that we'll see in a little bit in the uh, locker uh, and what they what the principles again are not only behind this but behind the whole build here it's from the marine industry and i it's common i think in the marine industry where they're always they're filling water from from uh, shore hookups at docks the filtration system for the drinking water goes through um, a micro filtering system that removes the contaminants that uh, might be present in, in the hose arrangements and those kind of uh, situations. So it's really nice to have a third water line system that's dedicated just to drinking water. Moving over here again, uh, this is a two burner uh, induction range. And uh, it's pretty straightforward, uh, such as you'd have in your house. As long as you are prepared to carry induction-ready uh, pots and pans, but that's pretty com getting pretty common now, so uh, that is not uh, really not an issue. Uh, below that built-in is a 130-liter isotherm drawer-style uh, re pull-out refrigerator. Uh, it's uh, it. it it's quite spacious. The only, I guess the only thing getting used to is we have to have, you have to kind of have container arrangements uh, to stack down below uh, to get the maximum use of the space. And then it, it has a freezer, uh, freezer compartment up here. Coming around, we talked about the standard drawer storage uh, configurations. So a couple, three sizes here. Uh, two bottom drawers here, lights, uh, and everything. And you'll notice these two, these two uh, drawers here are got a, got a little extra false front on them because uh, they are how you get up to the bed here. And I'll show you that right now. Um, I controlled it back here from the C-Zone panel. Uh, the dice, as I said, controls everything. It's also available from this little latch ring here. Uh, you, you can just walk in and pull it up from there. And there's your uh, uh, access to your bed, and you can move on up there. One of the things that we really like about this arrangement is the pass through to the cab. That checked one of the boxes that we wanted. You know, slide-in campers, you know, they may have a window pass-through in the back of the pickup. Earth Cruiser actually takes the unfinished chassis they get from Ford, and they cut this pass-through hole in here, 
And this is a little thermal curtain that folds down. And uh, so we put it back up. And here's a full pass through that, yes, on your hands and knees, you can get into your cab. And if you have to, you can actually make it all the way up and drive away. But we find this uh, very useful. Uh, and it's easy to get things uh, in at night if you want to pull something out of the, the uh, cab that you didn't bring in. Uh, the accordion mount between the house unit and the cab is the same type of accordion, uh, different size, of course, from a manufacturer who makes the path-throughs for the ambulance industry. So it's a really robust uh, allows a lot of separate movement between cab and the chassis arrangement. Let's take a look at the underfloor because Earth Cruiser uh, was very conscious of making this a four season camper. So there are no uh, utilities as far as the water and the gray tank that uh, are outside. So underneath here in this false floor, still inside the living space, is your sure flow. Uh, water pumping system and on this side the yellow unit is again from the marine industry it's their uh, gulper pump and this pump draws the water out of your shower sump uh, that's here right inside the door the uh, other two compartments here are just uh, their their storage and it goes all the way back to the wall here behind me Okay, moving around on this side, uh, there's a small catch-all drawer up here that's, uh, as you can see, useful for just what I said, catch-all. Toilet paper roll dispenser, of course, covered when, uh, because this becomes a shower area. Your shower attachments here, water temperature adjustment here on it. Uh, then the composting toilet is in here, which in the... Uh, four-wheel camper that we have, we had a small cassette toilet. So I was a little skeptical of composting toilet, how they worked. Uh, there are some excellent videos on uh, to watch on the composting toilet. And I can say in this year that we've had this, that the uh, composting toilet has worked really well and I'm impressed because it takes the uh, solid waste and that that is separate in this back compartment back here and the liquid your urine is caught up here so they're kept completely separate and in this back area we use a coconut core or coconut hus and it's it's really easy to manage so a uh, the solid waste back here, you simply detach the upper part here, you, re you take this out, you flip this over in a garbage can, the composted part, and it can be discarded in household waste. And uh, then you simply dump one bag of uh, coconut core back in there and you're all done. It doesn't need to be cleaned, it doesn't need to be washed out inside. Um, as a matter of fact, the bacteria that the good bacteria that breaks down and makes the composting, uh, you want to actually leave some of the previous uh, materials in there when you dump it, which contributes to the breakdown uh, in the uh, new uh, core coconut core that you place in. So this is a heavy duty slider, uh, 500 pound rated. Uh, it's got clips. This side actually will sit on this little edge here. Uh, and it uh, move, moves in and out and it locks in place. So uh, we're, we're quite pleased with that after having dealt with uh, a cassette toilet. Underneath uh, here, as I talked before, we keep a little rug here. This is the uh, shower, well, and sump. So you're standing on this uh, here. The water it collects, of course, and goes down underneath this little white drain and gets caught uh, and picked up by the, the uh, sump pump and put into the gray tank. So that's how water management occurs with the, uh, 
with your shower water. The, the sump here, the drain trap and a little arrangement is outside of the heated cab as well as the discharge for the gray tank and we'll see that in a little bit. Those are all insulated and they are heat traced with 12 volt uh, heat tracing that uh, then in you know in below zero temperature you can simply turn on that that heat tracing and uh, keep that area from freezing up. Getting back to some of the control switching. Now these switches, this is an example of the switches. As a matter of fact, this is the only switches in the whole unit. Uh, the rest of the switches uh, are in the C-Zone, but these simply send information to the C-Zone computer, uh, stair lockout so we can keep the stairs uh, up and down on the, the uh, top, and we'll see that in a little bit. Uh, interior lighting, this turns on the ceiling lights, and this will be your shower pump uh, to turn on when you're taking a shower in it, and then the, the sensor will activate the uh, water removal pump to, and uh, send it to the gray tank. Fire extinguishers have moved from the, from the traditional bottle and kind. They've moved into the uh, fire stick. This is an, this is an element, uh, and I think element makes two sizes of fire sticks for fire suppression. So this represents our uh, fire safety fire extinguisher that they've installed. Uh, moving up to the bed arrangement here, uh, as I said, we have uh, a tip up here for counter space. Uh, we can take that down. Some nice compartments under here for iPads and, and other accessories. And the mattress uh, that they provide is a pretty typical uh, it's a medium density foam, uh, and I believe it's about four inches here. Um, and it's folded up here on this end now. Uh, that accommodates the uh, that accommodates that tip up there. So this is the uh, mattress arrangement uh, from them. And I'll get into some of our over the years we've learned uh, with our we've had a four wheel camper for. Um, 10 years now. This is the 10th year and we still have that. Um, we have found that we take uh, and we we use uh, XPED and that's E-X-P-E-D. XPED self-inflating air mattresses and uh, we put two, we, we have twins. That way when one person moves the other person doesn't go up and down. Um, to flip this up, I rolled them, rolled them up this morning, but uh, they're self-inflating and they will, uh, we leave them, we can actually leave them inflated, both of them, uh, if we're not flipping up for counter space because uh, Earth Cruiser has built the space in the bed uh, high enough so your bedding can, uh, stay in place, including your pillows. That's something we couldn't do in our four-wheel camper. There was re just insufficient space when the top came down uh, to uh, allow you to leave your bedding up there. Uh, you could leave a sleeping bag up there, no problem. Because we have so much battery capacity that I'll talk about in a little bit, um, we're cheating here because we actually put on a, uh, have a sun Sunbeam electric blanket in here. So. Now this, this is probably the, the most thing that uh, is as far as comfort goes to get into a warm bed at night. So this is, uh, it's an interesting addition. We've never had this before because we never had the battery capacity. But uh, we turn this on before we go to bed and it's uh, quite comfortable and warm. Uh, we'll go over the window configurations a, a little bit because there are about there are three options not about there are three options the window see-through plastic arrangements they come out in in their entirety they zip out and I actually if I take them out there's a little storage bag they give you and I store them under there uh, you know being down here in Arizona it's really dry uh, we will take them out or is in this one here we actually have just left the uh, plastic rolled down but this piece would come out and I'll store there uh, and then rolled up here in front of it is the screen and the curtain now no matter which configuration you have the window in 
the canvas is designed and will handle water management. Of course, of course, you have to have the curtain up for that. This side over here, I've set up for I've set up to show the screen arrangement. I've left the plastic window outside. Uh, this the screen is up, and this is on all of them. The screen mesh here is really tight. Uh, it actually works as a uh, sunshade. So I'm not sure what the pass through is, but certainly it's uh, no, no, there will be nothing getting through here. No small gnats, no uh, no seams or anything will get through this screen. And actually it's so dense that if the wind is blowing, this will cut down wind coming through uh, on it. One of the things with pop-up canvas sided campers is wind noise uh, from the uh, canvas moving during windstorm. Now you see the bungee cord around here. Really the only function for the this bungee wrap is when we put the top down, this just accommodates bringing the fabric in for closure. The way Earth Cruiser has built this, the attachment from the top to the bottom of the canvas, the canvas is cut three quarters of an inch shorter than the four lift cylinders that lift the top. So when the lift cylinders are up in the raised position, this canvas is pulled completely tight and you will get no flapping uh, of any significance with any wind. And that's because it can be held taut by the four lift jacks on the four corners. A little bit on the uh, electrical capacity because there is no propane uh, used in this camper build. Uh, I do carry a 20 pound uh, propane canister and you'll see that it's in the locker outside. That's for our fire pit. We, uh, we simply do that in lieu of building campfires or anything. Underneath of the, my feet here, and it actually goes from, the, from this all the way down to the bottom of the storage lockers, there are two large Mastervolt lithium ion batteries. They are both rated at 480 amp hours, so giving us a total of 960 amp hours of battery capacity. Their rating associated with wattage each battery is rated at 6,000 watts, so we have a total of 12,000 watt hours uh, of battery capacity. They are charged from the truck uh, through a 50 amp DC to DC charger, and Earth Cruiser does have an option for a second DC to DC charger because the batteries can be charged at the rate of 100 amp hours. So that is something that I kind of maybe should have got the second DC to DC charger. Uh, and of course then the other charging for the batteries is through the solar panels. Uh, the roof uh, of the unit here is got six Sure Flare uh, solar panels on it. They are adhesive mounted so they are flat panels. Um, I hadn't been really familiar with uh, flat mounted, adhesive mounted panels. I know there's some uh, concerns about heat buildup underneath the panel and longevity. They're only a little over 100 amp hour panels, so we have 600 amp hours of battery charging up there. It would be nice if the panels were larger, but I have not investigated or uh, asked why the panel ratings um, are, I guess, what some people would consider low uh, on the wattage side. All the electrical controls, the C-Zone computer that runs everything from the C-Zone, it's located against this back wall uh, and they provide easy access to them. All the electrical and computer controls uh, for the C-Zone, the charging system, the DC to DC charger are located back here. Uh, solar charger regulated, they run off of a master volt system. This is the 50 amp DC to DC charger. These are, these are the C-Zone interface, so these are the switching 
Uh, down here is the fuse arrangement for the C-Zone. And I know there's some criticism out there. Well, what happens if your C-Zone panel goes out? You can't turn anything on. Well, C-Zone has made this. So here is, here is all the components that the C-Zone control and their respective fuses. If, if the C-Zone system went down, all I have to do, like for the fresh water pump, all I have to do is pull the 10 amp fuse and move up. There's a, there's a secondary plug up here and that provides direct power. So if the C-Zone went down and I wanted my fresh water system on, I pull this fuse, I just move it up and move it to the up position here and then the fresh water system would be on. In addition to the electrical components here and access to the C-Zone computer through the screen there. The, uh, there's a Wi-Fi network established by the C-Zone computer. This is the uh, antenna for it. And C-Zone has a iPad app that is the exact same configuration as the C-Zone controller here. So I can control everything in the system here through Wi-Fi from my iPad. So we can be up front at three o'clock uh, driving. If I uh, decide that, okay, well, we're gonna use uh, hot water, I'll go there. Uh, I'll simply go into the iPad app and turn on the hot water heater and let it run. So when we get to camp, we got uh, full, full hot water. So that's nice. It's another workaround if the screen display should be an issue. Down here underneath this, it, uh, in this area sits flat, the 3000 watt inverter to run all the uh, 120 volt uh, items. The water heater is a three gallon Bosch water heater that sits down underneath the sink and behind here. That is 120 volt and the uh, microwave's 120 volt and then of course the induction range and all your 120 volts. So all that is powered out of a 3000 watt inverter. Earth Cruiser will provide and can provide a optional air conditioning system and it's not a roof mount. They do not want to penetrate the roof. Uh, they want to keep the, the clean profile plus it gives you full solar panel capacity. So the air conditioner is set up. So right where the coffee pot is setting, there would be a small two knob control unit and an air discharge. And when we go outside in the locker arrangement outside is where the compressor pump would run. And then the heat exchanger uh, would sit on the back, back there by the uh, max tracks when we get around to the back. So that's an uh, air conditioning option. I like to say that uh, we run from hot weather and we run from cold weather. So as soon as it gets hot down here, you know, we'll work our way back up to our base in Montana for the summer. But uh, those interested in air conditioning, you certainly have a, a, a OEM installation uh, there. Uh, as far as a door screen, if you happen to be uh, in an area where you need this screen, there's a roll down uh, screen here that's available. Uh, and again, it's, uh, it's a Canadian company and uh, it's uh, quite high quality. And one of the interesting things, it's not something that when you get it zipped down, that every time you go in and out, uh, you have to unzip it because the, I've just zipped it to a breakaway magnetic uh, sidewall. So it simply, you simply push in, comes back, and the magnet's locking in place. So it, uh, that's pretty, that's, that's handy. I really, I really like, you know, no zipping, just push away uh, on that. So now we'll move around to the outside. Uh, powered uh, stairs arrangement. Uh, is nice. There is a lockout switch on those uh, right inside the door there. So when you're opening and closing the door, the stairs aren't going in and out. Earth Cruiser's house build up here is uh, a fiberglass uh, composite and 
it like the whole roof arrangement is a single pour and this front mount is a single pour and there's an attachment seam there to the back half of the house that they do the unit along with the truck will would be all white if you didn't uh, put any wrap on it we chose to do a wrap we we ourselves worked with a uh, designer and a wrap company in denver we picked the wrap we did some little off things we kind of picked orange uh, for our little river flow through the topos there a little personal touch there we put uh, uh, montana montana mountains on this side and when we get around to the other side, you will see uh, we put Arizona cactus on the other side. So we didn't really want a completely white uh, vehicle, and this is about the only option. And the design company in Denver works with you. You finalize the design. They print all the film, and they send it up to Bend, and Earth Cruiser has a wrap installer who will do the wrap. So. It really, came, it really came out well as far as the wrap goes and their fit. As far as where Earth Cruiser starts with their build, their build process occurs in two uh, separate segments, I guess I'll call it. They purchase an unfinished chassis from Ford. This is a Ford 350 uh, Lariat edition as far as trim level inside. So they start with this unfinished chassis. They do upgrades on the suspension system, shocks, springs, both front and rear. The factory springs are all removed. Uh, they have Deaver springs installed in the back designed to carry the weight of the camper. They also uh, take off the factory tires. They upgrade the tires to uh, F-load index tires and they are use method HD which is a high load carrying method rim so they replace the rims and the tires from uh, Ford's OEM delivery and through those modifications of the the chassis the frame suspension the the wheel arrangements and other things I've not been told they have recertified this Finnish uh, unit like this at 13,000 uh, pounds for gross vehicle weight so they've went through whatever the sort certif vehicle certification requirements are to have it uh, rated for full load at 13,000 pounds and I have weighed three times and the highest weight I had ever gotten with uh, all water, uh, full gas, is uh, 12,700 pounds. And neither axle is overloaded. The rear axle is rated approximately 7,000 pounds. And the front axle is, uh, weight is, actual weight is rated at 5,000 to 6,000 I've run it, but anyway, the total comes out to be 13,000 pounds. We do carry, uh, have the capacity for 56 gallons of water, uh, and it's, there's uh, 36 gallons on the refrigerator side, and there's 20 gallons here on the door side. So that's, uh, that's certainly a weight consideration, but it's mounted low, so the center of gravity remains low. And the fuel tank on the vehicle is 35 gallons. And we selected uh, a gas uh, unit. This is not a diesel. We picked gas primarily for concerns with diesel engine service. Uh, I know diesel would be very reliable, but you know we have to deal with death. And the last thing I wanna be is way out in the desert and have a computer issue and end up having the diesel go into the limp mode and have to limp our way out of the back country. So we picked the gasoline and this gas engine in here is Ford's 7.3 liter gas engine, largest gas engine that they uh, can supply. And I jokingly it's referred to as Ford's 7.3 liter Godzilla engine. So we are not short of any horsepower. 
uh, or, or torque capacity uh, with this unit at uh, the vehicle weights. The engine did come with uh, upgraded uh, electric capacity in it. So similar to what you'd find in a diesel, we have two batteries, uh, one on each side, and we also have two alternators in here. So we have over, uh, I think, almost 400 uh, amps of generator capacity for recharge. Uh, so we have a lot, of, a lot of capacity up front on the battery side of things. Moving back to the back area here, uh, the couple of compartment doors you see. This compartment door, I believe they designed so if someone did want a cassette toilet, this is a uh, Thedford, which is a common cassette toilet manufacturer uh, door. Uh, so I believe that could have been an option, it was an option. We just selected their composting toilet. This, this happens to be the little crank where you keep the composting process going. Um, I, you'll see in a minute here, I took the opportunity to install a second air compressor uh, for tire inflation. We always deflate tires off trail. And um, I put in a twin ARB on the other side of the wall here. And this actually is my air hookup for the uh, twin air ARB there that, uh, and then I just run my hose out here and tie into the one that they provide. They provide a single uh, Viair 450 compressor, uh, and uh, but I it's a little slow for these big tires, so I just decided to put in a uh, ARB. I didn't really want to be just with relying on one compress compressor. One of the options that uh, they provide is a. Uh, uh, a secondary fridge, a slide-out fridge. They have a, a Timbo Tusk pull-out here, so we can just pull it out. And uh, we generally keep all our just drinks in here. Uh, inside is generally keep all our food, so very convenient just to come out here and grab a beverage out of. Uh, around on this side, this is where the uh, air compressor is. I spoke. That's the twin ARB that's really common. 120 volt power outlet right up here uh, for power back here. And um, there is not a 120 volt outlet on the outside, other side. So I did run uh, just an extension cord around. You have uh, the option for a uh, second sh outside shower or wash off. So, so we have a, a marine industry uh, in a little uh, shower arrangement here so you can do uh, outside showering and uh, then up here I talked about the three water piping system up here is another one of the ecology technology drinking water spouts so you can get your drinking water out here the storage compartment here um, in the back goes all the way to the other side and I'll leave this door down so when we get the other side you'll be able to to see out here. Um, so long things can go all the way across the back. Oh, as I mentioned inside the uh, composting toilet, uh, when I just flip it over and remove the compost out of the solid waste compartment, all I have to do is open a bag and dump a bag of coconut uh, core in, or coconut husk, and this, this is how convenient it is. You just have to you use one bag, it's just eight quarts, uh, you can just pick it up at uh, uh, a nursery, supply store, uh, Amazon carries it as a matter of fact. You simply open this eight quart bag, dump in there, and you're ready for the next, uh, I don't know, 30 days. We, we, with two of us, uh, we probably get uh, 20 camp nights out of the, the capacity before, before it's time to uh, change it out. So uh, again, that we find that so much better than dealing with a cassette toilet and dumping the cassette toilet, uh, finding a place to dump it. So that has worked really well, uh, and I'm quite I'm quite impressed with that. Provided by uh, Earth Cruiser as an option is a 230, uh, 270 degree awning. This awning, when it's deployed being 270 degrees and mounted the hinge point back here this comes all the way around over the back of the thing. then the second section goes all the way out 
and, and goes and attaches just about up here is where the, where the attachment point is. So you have awning out here and then all the way around the back. And in addition to that, uh, we also have the wall enclosures that zip into that. So we can actually make an, an exterior enclosure out here out of the full awning cover uh, space. Earth Cruiser has provided three exterior light, uh, one on this side, one on the back, and one on the far side. These lights uh, are uh, turned on by the C-Zone controller, or I have a key fob that I'll show you in a little bit that it's a four function key fob that communicates with the C-Zone computer. I can also sequence these lights on from, the, from that key fob or again from the iPad uh, if we're sitting out here and, and just and want to turn the lights on. Back here, all the bumper work is of course custom built by Earth Cruiser. Uh, Max tracks uh, come with it here. There's a holder. This is ours. This is a rodent control. So we make sure that, uh, that we have rodent control in camp. As far as shore power, uh, again, another high-end shore power connection uh, is made by Smart Plug. Uh, so this is extremely heavy duty uh, shore power connection there uh, that uh, we charge at home uh, when we want to plug in. Um, one of the features I use all the time is when we just before we're ready to come out I bring it down when we're putting in um, I'll just quickly throw this uh, shore power on and we'll heat the, the water tank up through it. The batteries stay topped off when it's outside uh, of course with the solar panel so it's not an issue there. Earth Cruiser provides a utility receiver uh, in this upper position. This is for your uh, bike rack, uh, you know, if you wanted to get work, work with some spacing and try to get a motorcycle arrangement put back here. So that's the upper receiver. The bottom receiver is a standard tow receiver down below that's hooked to the uh, frame. And uh, this, this is what I call my tail dragger. This is, this is an addition I put in. This helps, you know, when I drag the rear end uh, out of a deep wash and the rear drags, kind of protects the bottom of that. I did have Earth Cruiser put in a uh, skid plate right in front of this, uh, back in here, between here and the gas tank. I didn't want this to act as a plow dragging through, so we've got a skid plate back in there. As far as the lift system for the roof, uh, Earth Cruiser provides a four-point lift uh, on the two back corners and the intermediate one on each side up front. These are electric Linux uh, screw jacks that lift the uh, top up. And this is what I was referring to when Earth Cruiser cuts the canvas sides three quarters of an inch short. These jacks then pull it taut uh, and really keeps the fabric tight and it really minimizes any movement in the wind. One of the questions come up, you know, do you ever use the Max Tracks? Um, and, and the answer for me was, I've already used them one time in a situation where it would have been very difficult to get out. I'll kind of explain it. We were, uh, there was a narrow wash uh, uh, up over in central Arizona and it had rained a couple days prior so there was actually a small flow of water down through and there was a sand kind of a sand ledge uh, on one side the other one was a nice approach but it came up to a little sand ledge that was cut there that you had to go up well I was able to push the front wheels with no issues up over uh, that ledge but when the back end and this is the heaviest portion ran into that ledge that was really the end of it. All they do, even with the uh, lockers, because this rear axle from Ford has a rear locker on it. So even with the lockers engaged on this rear axle, all I would do was dig the bank away and it would not lift it up. So I backed up a few feet, put two max tracks up the bank on each side and just drove up out of it. So 
That is a max track success story. That's where they're most benef beneficial. Uh, back here, Earth Cruiser provides a, a custom made spare tire cover on it. So all your trash is, is held back here. So it's quite nice. I mean, it's kind of kind of common to have the trash bag uh, over a spare tire over landing, but it, it's just a great uh, addition to have it out here. I talked about the ARB air compressor hookup inside. You get, as I said, you get one uh, Viair 450 compressor in here. Their compressor outlet is right here for for the hookup, so it can be you can hook up there. And they kind of relocated this, made their own bracket. Uh, this is just, they relocated Ford's uh, trailer electrical package back here too. I talked about the uh, heater inside, that it's a gasoline heater. It pulls gas out of a dip tube in the uh, fuel tank. Uh, and this little guy down here, this is the uh, furnace exhaust. So it's a flexible metal pipe that uh, they run out there. Uh, for your heater exhaust. Opposite side storage compartment is here. Um, again, a pass through here, it goes all the way through to the other side and uh, for, long, for long items. And this is where I talked about, we carry a uh, 20 pound propane tank. This is for our fire pit, has nothing to do with uh, the camper. Just out of luck, this is a standard tote. You can get from a big box, uh, Home Depot, Costco sells them. Uh, the Scepter military style plastic gas cans. I can tip this box on its side, put three five gallon cans in there and actually pull it around and they will set up right and my, my little ladder will actually sit on top. So I can, if I need, carry uh, 15 extra gallons of fuel in this bin contained uh, so there wouldn't, there wouldn't be any spillage issue about it. So that's, that really worked out kind of well. Both these doors on this side and the other side can be unhooked and dropped, dropped all the way down. Access to the Seagull uh, Ecology Technology filter is in there. And also right behind that panel that comes out is your uh, electric water heat arrangement. So as far as carrying the extra 15 gallons of, of fuel in here, that's really not necessary uh, for any short range from the, of course. As far as uh, where it becomes an issue is when we're, when we do go on an extended trip, we do spend a lot of time with the tires aired down. Uh, the tire rating is 80 PSI. I run them at 80 PSI on the highway for fuel efficiency. If we're on the highway, we have gotten between 12 and 13 miles to gallon on the freeway, uh, generally flat, flat areas. So our range with our 35 gallon gas tank in that, you know, we can almost make 400 miles is what our total range would be. Off-road, whether if I'm pushing low tire pressure in sand or I'm on hard, hard pack roads, the, the fuel efficiency drops between six and nine miles per gallon. And you're generally, you know, you're generally running four or five mile an hour uh, going up and down through the washes out here in the sand. So that's low, that's where extra fuel is a consideration uh, when we get into those situations. I said I run the tire pressure at 80 PSI on the highway. During uh, the off-road out here, I'm down to 35 pounds uh, on the rear and about 30 pounds of pressure in the front. So the tire is pretty well deformed and uh, it's good for traction and it's a huge plus for rideability and comfort and you really ease on your suspension system. Uh, so that's why getting from the 35 PSI up to 80 when we get back to pavement, that's why I like to use the, uh, put in the other compressor for tying. Locker storage compartment, there's one of these lockers on the other side. This is uh, strictly a uh, exterior locker for things you don't want to get wet. So. Uh, this side happens to be consumed with a fuel fill. Um, I have a little uh, bib here because the uh, 
the way Ford makes the fuel fill for unfinished chassis, they, uh, it's quite flat. So I will get a little spat, splash back and I try to keep it out of the compartment there uh, with this. So and this is just a little homemade piece that I got off of my Tacoma actually. Moving up here in this area, there's two items. One is the uh, fresh water tank drain if you want to empty your tanks. And the other is the 18 gallon gray water tank discharge. Um, I've already taken the hold downs off of here. So uh, here's the electric actuator and the discharge for the small gray tank. And up here is where you can drain your freshwater tanks. Um, I spoke of uh, heat tracing or heat tape on any water areas outside of the house compartment for freezing. Here's the here's the example on this one. Above here where the water's held, because uh, the tank's inside the house here, you can see the insulation wrap and their 12 volt heat trace lead into that. So that's how you're protected from freezing here. While we're in here, you can see that uh, part of their chassis modifications are this, uh, this heavy duty Deaver leaf spring that they've replaced Fords with. And this is one of the ho house mounts that they've put in. So they take the chassis and they have three house attachment points on this side and of course three on the other side to the frame of the truck. So this is their build. They have a proprietary spring loaded cushion arrangement in here. So the house is riding on springs uh, off of the chassis inside the, the uh, red circle there. Uh, in here uh, I've done a additions to hold the electronics, the iPad, running mapping. I run Gaia and Onyx off-road. Uh, up here is a mount, and this is a Design 67 mounting rail and Design 67 uh, carbon fiber arms. I do use uh, the Ram X-Grip mounts for all, uh, all the uh, devices on this end. Ram also makes a Spot X. We run a Spot X, so the Spot X mount here as well as the GoPro running here. Uh, and over there is the uh, an Apple charging plate for uh, uh, the Apple phone will set up there and charge. Managing a full-size iPad in here, um, it's really too big to mount from any of this area. So what I've been using in this, the four-wheel camper and also uh, our Jeep is a, this is all RAM mount hardware, and the uh, iPad sits in here, so it's, and this is RAM mount's uh, grip for the full-size iPad, but instead of figuring out a way how to mount it, I simp uh, they also make a, a seat insert mount. So this is completely removable uh, in there. Uh, to set by the seat, and it's really quite stable. Uh, I have it rest against, uh, I put some uh, Velcro felt on here, so it rests against here, the back of it, but it, uh, it, really, it really works well. It really comes out to be a, a stable mount with really no, no, no issues off-road. You know, it might move a little bit, but it really just, just hangs in there and does does really quite well. So we're at the back, in the back seat area. So, you know, you might wonder what in the heck is going on back here. Is this guy a bungee nut or what? Well, you buy a bungees and what do you do? You get a, you get a pack of six or you get a pack of four. So one, I store my extra bungee here so I can always grab them. But the primary use it, on the bungees is um, we actually uh, attach everything through carabiners to a bungee someplace to keep it organized and keep it from from one falling against the door and falling out. So uh, that's it. And then of course we're not using them all. So if I need a bungee, I'll just unhook one, grab it, and take outside. So that's the story. The dogs the dog has her own uh, bungee retention uh, device up here, so she she can be bungeed in up there. I did take the 60 side seat out of here. Um, one, it took up a lot of space. If it was folded up, you couldn't use the pass side. 
uh, if you fold it down, it just took up a lot of space in here. So that allows all, all the items we have over here. Actually have a little, the propane fire pit is sitting over here in front of me underneath these items. I kept the, uh, the 40 side seat over there. So we do have a jump seat for a third passenger. Uh, and I leave it in the up position because it doesn't impede access to the back. So I managed, uh, managed the seating arrangement like that. I have my, I have the heaviest uh, items. I carry my big uh, Factor 55 recovery bag is under here with all of the recovery gear. Behind that are the two side panels uh, to make up the walls of the uh, curtain uh, awning. So that's what's under here. And then uh, of course the, uh, the dog, the dog gets special treatment too, gets its own, own bed arrangement back here and loves the pasture. When you're breaking camp and we're bringing the top down, uh, there are a few ways to uh, bring the top down. One is you can kneel inside and use the C-zone panel that we took a look at. Uh, two is right inside the door uh, on those switches that we showed in the shower area. That uh, has the up-down switch and the C-Zone, of course, is available on the iPad. I can open the iPad app and do it there. The way we commonly do it is reaching in through the door and or uh, there's a key fob that communicates with the C-Zone in there. It's a four function key fob and uh, it has an up-down switch. So we'll hit switch number two uh, to bring it down. And this is the process uh, for closing it up. And there's the functioning of the bungee, uh, pulling the canvas in. And we're done. How do we get to this Earth Cruiser? We looked at four vehicles that we thought were robust enough to do our style of overlanding, and we wanted them built on domestic truck chassis. So we looked at Earth Roamer out of Colorado. We, and then we have Earth Cruiser here from Bend, Oregon. We looked at the sports, full-size sportsmobile, which is now field van. And then of course, you can put a four-wheel camper in a full-size uh, pickup. Well, we ruled out the four-wheel camper. You know, we didn't, doesn't have the good pass-through. That was one of the things that we were looking for. We did go to, uh, Colorado and rent a sportsmobile 2018 before we purchased this just to, to having that experience. We really didn't like the arrangement with respect to your whole house and living arrangement is back there and it's really noisy when you're driving, rattling and the construction materials, uh, I don't know, it just, it just didn't sit well with us. We couldn't afford the uh, Earth Roamer. I mean, that is a beautiful vehicle. It's all built out of carbon fiber. So we ended up uh, the tier down here at Earth Cruiser, which we felt was very good. It's very robustly built all around the marine industry with respect to fiberglass use, structural components and structural riveting, and then monolithic uh, pores of fiberglass. So that's how we ended up here. And um, we're, we're happy with our choice. And we've had it for a year. We've got about 10,500 miles on it. Um, we've had two winters down here. We picked it up in February of 2023. And uh, we're down here for another winter and we'll head back north uh, come spring. What a cool rig and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Big thanks to Bill and Maureen for letting us into their, uh, their home away from home here. And if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. Bill especially is very good at, at, uh, at monitoring the comments and, and replying to them. We've also done a tour together of his previous rig. I'll put a link down uh, in the description below if you guys want to see that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com.
links to these sites and more will be in the video description.